take every word before the Lord for confirmation. Prophetic words may not be intended literally. Not every word is for every person. If you wish to sow into this ministry, use the link in the details box below this video. The word bogan featured in a video that came up in my YouTube feed and it was pretty serious content. Um, some of you in America might have some idea of what the video is that I'm talking about. It was featuring a region called Bogan. And when I closed on out of that, at the very top of my Facebook notifications was some really obscure post from someone I don't know, also featuring the word Bogan. So I knew <laughs> that God wanted me to sit down and seek a word for you. That's not to say that I'm suggesting that you are a bogan. I'm going to share the definition of a bogan with you. An uncouth or unsophisticated person regarded as being of low social status. We have a demographic in my city that are frequently referred to as bogans. People who are considered a bogan are seen as and probably see themselves as having a dead-end life, nothing to aspire to, nothing to look forward to, being stuck on, um, on handout payments, on safety net payments with no other options and no hope. No hope is what really... Um, I believe that that is the overlying theme of what it would be or what it might feel like to be what we characterise as a bogan. God says your bogan days are over. No longer are you rough around the edges. No longer are you crass. Crass? <laughs> crass. I have given you a supernatural makeover. I've polished your raw edges. You have come out golden and gleaming. You have a sweet aroma. I want you to stop thinking of yourself as that person because when you think of yourself that way, when you see yourself that way, when you look at yourself in that way, what you are actually doing is giving power to the enemy. You are coming into agreement with the enemy and it's akin to saying to the enemy, okay, you say that I'm less than, you say that I'm these things, I agree with you and I will dress the way the enemy wants me to dress. I will speak the way the enemy wants me to speak and I will aspire to the low level that the enemy wishes me to aspire to. But God says, I'm here to tell you a secret. When the enemy comes against people, the way he has come against you, it is because you have a higher calling on your life. And I have permitted the things of the world to come against you to the extent that I have, because I knew that you were being galvanized in the process. Now, when something's galvanized, it has a strength. It has a resilience. It doesn't rust easily. It doesn't break down easily. Now, this is not to say that you have a hard outer shell. God takes our hearts of stone and turns them to flesh. Ezekiel 36, 26. I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you. I will remove from you your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. God puts a new spirit in us and he gives us a heart of flesh so that we can place ourselves in other people's shoes, so we can have compassion, so that we can empathize. This is all part of the process of making us more like Jesus, more likely to take the shirt off our own back to share with another, more likely to take those boots that we never use and let somebody else put them to good use. More likely to share the soup that we've just cooked. All these changes are not possible without Holy Spirit in us. We can 
emulate these changes. But at the end of the day, something supernatural happens to bring us to this point of semblance so that we can start to resemble Jesus Christ, so that we can start to represent Christ with some integrity. No, none of us are perfect. It's something to aspire to. God says, gone are the days of the past. No more behaving in a certain way to impress others. No more behaving in a certain way to fit in. You are now somebody who does not care what other people think. You don't care what people think because you care what God thinks. And too often in this world, what God thinks of us is in conflict with what the world thinks of us. Too often when we are within God's will, when we are in obedience to God, when we are doing exactly what God wants us to do, there are people of the world who will shake their finger at us and say, you're wrong, that's bad, that's crazy, that's silly, that's useless, you're wasting your time, you're wasting your energy, you're making a fool of yourself. There comes a point where we don't care what people think of us because we can see things from that higher perspective and even in those seasons when we don't really know exactly what God is doing minute to minute because he hasn't revealed it to us yet we know that following God step by step is what will get us to our destination and we no longer look around us to see where the danger lurks we no longer look around to see where the competition lies we don't open a business based on how much income we can make and am I better than my competitor. We open a business because God wills it, because God has given us that nudge and we've received that revelation that that's where God is leading us. That's confirmation for somebody. Jesus demonstrated a special gift to us. It's called communion. There are many in the traditional church settings that would have us think that we cannot do communion on our own, that we cannot do communion at home. But guess what? We can. All communion is, and I don't say that to minimise it, but I'm sharing how simple it is. You take a beverage, you take some type of grain, and you reconfirm your contract with God, your covenant with God. You tell God, I believe that you made everything, everything in this universe, you made it. And I believe that you let your son Jesus die on the cross so that I, I and my loved ones would be forgiven of every sin, even future sins. But God, I'm changing. I am, I repent, I'm changing my ways. But if for some reason I slip up, in the future, you'll forgive that as well so that I can move on with vigour in obedience to you. And God, I believe that you left Holy Spirit with me to minister to me and to guide me in your purposes, in the ways of your kingdom, for your kingdom's increase. And as more and more people learn that Holy Spirit is an amazing superpower gifted to us from God and tap into that goodness and draw into alignment with God's will, the stronger and more powerful God's kingdom on earth becomes. Now don't talk to me about timelines. Don't say to me, but I'm too old, but I'm too young. Do you know what? God has big plans for all of us, for you, for me, for everyone. And he has a plan for this planet. Have you not heard yet? There's a billion soul harvest in the works and we're right on the cusp of it. We're right on the edge of something amazing. And it's not that we are going to be sent out there to Bible bash people. It's that we are being led by God to people who are at just that point 
in their life, just that point in their spiritual awareness. Or maybe God has supernaturally revealed himself to them and they need a touch from us, whether it's a bit of loving, whether it's a little bit of giving, whether it's a little bit of explanation or revelation, a word from God. We're all individuals and God is going to use us all in unique and wonderful ways. You all have a place in this harvest and God says, get excited, get excited. He's putting sickles in our hands. <laughs> that could sound scary, but it's because we're there to bring in the harvest and it's going to be a quick work because God has been laying down a foundation for this harvest. He's been building a barn for this harvest of souls to be brought into and they will be brought in and they will be tended to in the way that they need to be. This is not about ticking off numbers as people walk into church on an Easter. This is about bringing in the harvest. People who recognize who God is, people who recognize who Jesus is and people who make good use of Holy Spirit. And all around the world, one by one, more and more people are turning to God and saying, what does Holy Spirit have to say to me today? What does he want to tell other people through me? What's your priority for me today, God? Because in my own strength, I can come up with priorities. I can fill my diary up with events, with chores. But that's all from me. I want to know, God, what are you doing? What are you wanting me to do today? What are you wanting me to do a week from now? And how do I need to prepare for that? And God, I don't have every detail. I have no idea what I'll be doing this time next week. But I know that you will lead me every step of the way. You will lead me every step of the way, God. And anything that I need, you will bring it to me. And so I walk in joyful expectation, joyful anticipation of the good things that are coming to my life. When I look back, God has provided my every need. Do you know life is only a roller coaster when we don't have faith? But God has taken us out of that bogan mindset. One way we can think of a bogan is a bit like a, a pit bull that's ready for the fight. They're terrified that they're the one that's going to get killed. And so they will attack. And most of us live our life that way. Terrified of what's going to happen to us. Scared of what others have planned to do to us. But you know what? It doesn't matter what other people have planned. Whatever way others plan to come against us, God is bigger. God is more powerful. God is showing me that he has a very big gift for this generation. Different people are going to receive that gift at different times. But as they unpack this gift, as they unpack this understanding of who they really are, as they realize that the lies that science has told us, I'm not saying that science is wrong, but science has told us some lies. For example, science tells us that it's healthy to have sex and it doesn't really matter what the context is. It's good for you. So you should just go out and have sex. Whereas if you're anything like me, you've discovered that that is far from the truth. And we need to have wisdom and discernment and be guided by God on who we couple with. Other lies from science that we we drive our destiny. It isn't true. That isn't true. We can live with that illusion, but at the end of the day, we discover that no, we're not in charge. If we've been building on sand and what we've built collapses, despite being a good person, despite doing good things, despite being clever despite having a good education and it all collapses and disappears into the sand. 
then there comes a day where we realize that we need to build with Jesus. We need to build with Holy Spirit's guidance. And once we do so, we have a confidence, an innate confidence that tomorrow will be better than today. And if there's a bump in the road, we see it as an adventure. Life is only a roller coaster because we let it. It's only a roller coaster because we live in fear, not hope and faith. When we live in faith, when we live in hope, those bumps are leveled out. I saw a wonderful comment under a video recently someone had been guided by holy spirit you know when when they're going up and down the roller coaster of life just put your hands up and enjoy the ride <laughs> but god has also shown many of us that there is no roller coaster if we stand in faith when we know that god will come in and pay the bills every time however supernaturally we don't have to have that slump that low of fear and anxiety about how to pay that bill and you know when God comes in and blesses us it's always exciting but we get to a point of expectation where it's not the surprise maybe it once was but we come to expect the blessings and the miraculous as the norm that it's our normal experience and that day after day after day, we can come to expect the blessings. We can, we can come to expect the miraculous in our lives. And so this is how we come lay down lovers of God. Giving everything we have to God. Because we know that everything we give Him is nothing in comparison to what He gives to us. And what He gives to us is in His perfect timing in the perfect context and it doesn't get swallowed up by the sand nothing can take that away and so we rebuild brick by brick but instead of no mortar to hold this together God provides Holy Spirit Holy Spirit guides us to use mortar to connect these bricks and we have Jesus as a strong foundation. And what we build does not falter. We might be redirected sometimes. Maybe the style of the construction changes. But what we build lasts a lifetime and beyond. What we build lasts an eternity. And we're not building for us to hide away from the world. We're not building to self-isolate. We're building to share with others. We're building to invite other people in, to share the joy, to share the expectation, to share the wonderful process of praying about a need and then having our prayers answered. So leave the bogan behind, step into the new you, put on those beautiful new clothes, the white clothes that signify purity, righteousness and destiny. You know what your destination is and you can hear God calling you along that path and it isn't, it isn't going to let you down. You won't be disappointed. And here's the best part. You won't be going alone. Sure, you have God, Jesus and Holy Spirit all there. Arguing over which one's going to hold your hand today. But there's a growing army of warriors who are rediscovering who they are in Christ. Who are realising that they have a really important role. And that is to bring in this harvest of souls. And we won't be just bringing about personal transformation. Together we are going to transform humanity. And this shift is going to last 
for eternity. If this video blessed you, be sure to share, like and subscribe. If you would like to sow into this ministry, just follow the links in the details box below the video. God bless.